Alrighty, given that Intel and AMD have made it clear that using XMP or Expo is technically overclocking and therefore not in spec uh -huh. and not covered under warranty, is is it dishonest for reviewers to be encouraged to test these CPUs with these settings applied? Um, so I'm guessing they're saying, is it dishonest by AMD and Intel to encourage reviewers? Because I mean, AMD and Intel also benchmark that way. We'll get into yeah, that in a second. Yeah. Um, should we not test at explicitly supported memory uh, speeds? So, so stock speeds, like DDR5, 5200 or 5600 or whatever they are. Yeah. I mean, with these companies, we don't really... Do you trust, just to get off the topic for that, do you trust what it is that they're saying and telling you? Or do you just tr do you trust more their actions? And, yeah, yeah. And by that, I, I guess the point I'm trying to make there is, do we have a documented case ever of AMD or Intel denying a warranty because a user had XMP or Expo enabled? Not to my knowledge. Yeah, it would be a scandal. I would have thought, like, from a con, like, let's let's talk, let's be real for a second here. From a content creation perspective, if there was strong evidence that that was being done. That is a great video opportunity. Yeah, I mean, contact us or Gamers Nexus if 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 you have evidence of AMD or Intel denying your warranty claim, your CPU failed for whatever reason, and their response is you had you know you were overclocking your memory with XMP or Expo or whatever, then yeah, this is never going to happen. They will get destroyed for that. Mm. Um, it's it's kind of like I don't even know why they bother say because oh, look, I I get that they say that that technically voids your warranty like it's it's mm -hmm. it's out of spec behavior it's not supported it's a, it's a legal department has come in and said like yeah if yeah. you can't guarantee that 100 percent of cpus can use that memory then you can't officially have it in your warranty but if 99.9 percent .9 can do it then we have to be a little careful with our language well the reason you know? <laughs> why they would get absolutely wrecked and they can't do that is because both intel and both amd promote their products using overclocked memory like right. it's, it's very clear, and uh, I think Intel um, they go between stock memory testing and overclocked memory testing. It depends on the the set of benchmarks that you see. AMD across the board uses uh, overclocked memory, Expo memory for their mm -hmm. uh, performance claims, and anything that you see in marketing material, I believe, should be covered under warranty, no questions asked. If that's a level of performance that you are supposed to get from the product but that's only possible through an out of warranty configuration that's just bs like that that's just garbage like i guess you can't get away with that yeah but as we said leading into this the question is to to give this any sort of mm -hmm. attention invest any time discussing it get away from the hypotheticals has anyone had their warranty denied because Expo or XMP was enabled. And to my knowledge, no, that hasn't happened. It shouldn't happen. And if it does happen, definitely, as I said, reach out to uh, to someone like us or Gamers Nexus because that's a huge scandal. Uh, it's, it's just not going to happen. Uh, and so, you know, is it... That, that really does sort of... That's the beginning end of this though, right? Is is it actually a thing? Like, is it just some, some mm -hmm. legal jargon that, is to cover their backsides, but would never be enforced. Um, mm. Yeah, I sort of see it kind of like, you know, you wouldn't test an Intel processor at a locked 125 watts, even though they advertise that the CPU is a 125 watt TDP. The way that it's configured out of the box, the way most people generally use it, is in a higher power configuration. And Intel advertises like a 4900K is a 125 watt part or whatever but they advertise it as being, you should use this at 250 watts. So you can't really recon reconcile those two things. And it's similar for memory. They, they say that the memory speed that's supported for Zen 5, for example, is DDR5 5600, but they're advertising and showing, and most they know most people will use this at DDR5 6000. So you can sort of say, well, yeah, the official spec is this and, you know, it should run at this. You know, it's kind of like base clocks and boost clocks. How often should you expect to see your CPU run at boost clocks versus base clocks? They're only really guaranteeing the base clocks, right? Mm -hmm. But generally, you would expect it to achieve what they're telling you it should do and should achieve, which is expo-enabled, 
hitting your boost frequency as much as possible, probably using more power than they're claiming in the TDPs and things like that. So, yeah, I think in some, I don't want to say that the spec sheet is irrelevant and that you should just go on how these processes actually work when you're using them and what they're being recommended to run at because the spec sheet isn't irrelevant. But in terms of things like warranties and how it should be run for benchmarking, I think the best indication is How's the company advertising this to you? How is it run by default in motherboard biases, especially from AMD, which we know does a lot of motherboard setting validation? Mm -hmm. So if they're making it very easy for you to enable things like expo overclocking of memory and just running whatever frequencies and stuff that they want out of the box, then that's the configuration that should be tested, in my opinion. And I think if, if we saw AMD and Intel suddenly go back and say, hey, guys, please stop overclocking the memory, even though we told you to do it, if they came out and did that, I think yeah, there'd be there'd be a lot of backlash, and they they've kind of they're in a system now where it's expected that that will happen, and so they have to deal with the repercussions of that. If it was bad, they should be advising people, hey, don't over, like if it's blowing up CPUs, they should be like, guys, stop doing this. Like we know all of you are doing it, but you got to stop because you will cook your CPU. But mm -hmm. the fact they haven't done that, I think, is pretty indicative of. Um, yeah, so they're okay with uh, it. Touch on what you were saying. As for how you should test, I don't feel too strongly one way or the other. I think testing either at the official max memory uh, frequency or at the sweet spot frequency. I think they're. I can make a case for either one. I think they're equally yeah. valid, right? So one's the official maximum supported frequency that they're, I guess, standing by and guaranteeing, and the other one is what most users are going to use. So most users mm -hmm. are going to use sweet spot memory on a Zen four Zen five processor, which is. DDR5-6000, uh, most people aren't going to use DDR5-5200 um, or 5600. But if you want to test Zen 4 on 5200 and Zen 5 on 5600, go for it. I would make it very clear that you're doing that because you know that will result in quite different performance between those two CPUs, larger than what you see when using the same memory for both. So yeah, but mm -hmm. we, we prefer to find the, the sweet spot, what all CPUs should be capable of and what's sort of the best to to get the most performance out of the box by just enabling sort of a one-click feature, mm -hmm. which is Expo um, or XMP. Yeah, that's right. When I say, like, you should test like that, that's based on my testing philosophy, sure. our testing philosophies of yep. how I think testing should be done. There are certainly other valid configurations that you could make. Yeah, well, people like for. to argue which way is better. The, the yeah, Mac same with the power stuff. Spot. And it's and... like, yeah, I don't really mind. I mean, you've really got to pick one. It's, it's pretty difficult to test. Yeah, you're essentially doing the review more than double yes, by doing both. Right. So pick yep. one, just be clear on what it is you're doing. And usually we have the, you know, the test system spec and we yeah, show the memory right. use for Intel and the timing, the primary just timings. and Make a case for it. I mean, if, if AMD wants all reviewers to be testing with DR5-6000 across the board, then they could just support that memory speed, right? Like if... Well, it's weird because that's the memory. So... Um, with Zen 4, when, when Zen 4 yeah. came out, they provided the memory. Yeah. So they provided the DDR5 6000 CL30 memory that most reviewers still use. They provide that memory. They said, use this memory. This is the optimal memory for Zen 4. All CPUs will achieve it. Um, we'll get support across all motherboards, which you know, they eventually mm -hmm. did do. Uh, and with Zen 5, they said DDR5 6000 is still a sweet spot. You shouldn't be running higher than that. Um, DDR5-6000, that's the sweet spot. Higher than that becomes sort of silicon quality. They were they used that language in the review guide. So they said stick with the same memory as N4. Nothing's changed there. Uh, so that's that really. Yep. 